guys, it's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. So as you're about to find out, one of us has been sick for the last week and sounds kind of um, strange. So <laughs> we're going to get through this video. Wait a minute. Let's clarify. <laughs> More strange than normal. More strange than normal. Yeah, yeah you're we'll sounding a lot better today. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Boy, it was it was uh, quite the cold. Spent most of last week with this cold. I'm getting over it. But uh, yes, thank you guys for your patience. We know that we've been wanting to get one of these Meteorology Mondays out as soon as possible. And, you know, things happen. That's life. But it wasn't COVID. It was just a cold. All good here. But yeah, so if he sounds a little... Hey guys, it's Jim. <laughs> Happy Meteorology Monday. That's why. With that, what are we discussing today? Today we are going to talk about a tornadic event that occurred a long time ago, and this was suggested by some of our viewers, and that was the Duatlapur Satria 1989 tornado event. Did I do that right? I don't think so. I don't but think so. You put so much confidence. I tried. I've been really <laughs> working hard, guys, on this. It's not easy. Use a disclaimer going forward. These are a bunch of names that we are not sure the exact pronunciation, nor are we sure that we can actually pronounce them how they're supposed to be pronounced. So bear with us. We mean no disrespect. But before we get started, Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. Now, before we really dive into it, I think it's good to take a look at the geography mm -hmm. of, of the area and get a better understanding for how these storms can form and what can support these storms. Yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the topography and the surrounding geology of this area of the world. Bangladesh is a small, lush country in South Asia, located on the Bay of Bengal. It is surrounded almost entirely by neighboring India and shares a small border with Myanmar to its southeast, though it lies very close to Nepal, Bhutan, and China. The country is divided into three regions. Most of the country is dominated by the fertile Ganges Delta, the largest river delta in the world. The northwest and central parts of the country are formed by the Madhupur and Barind plateaus. The northeast and southeast are home to evergreen hill ranges. Bangladesh is called the land of rivers and it is home to over 57 transboundary rivers. Bangladesh is predominantly rich fertile flat land. Most of it is less than 12 meters or 39 feet above sea level. 17% of the country is covered by forests and 12% is covered by hill systems. Although severe weather frequently occurs in the Ganges Basin, which comprises the entirety of Bangladesh, such storms capable of producing tornadoes in this region are most common during the pre- and post-monsoon months. The pre-monsoon months, March to May, display the most favorable conditions for severe weather when higher amounts of atmospheric instability and wind shear occur. Instability is greatest over West Bengal, India, and adjacent areas of Bangladesh. Storms frequently develop in this region and travel southeast across the country. So there you have the geographic and topographic features of the surrounding area, including Bangladesh. I apologize, I keep going from Bangladesh to Bangladesh and, and it's no disrespect, it's just sometimes it just comes out that way and I, I try my best to be consistent, but that is the general characteristic of the landmass over there in Bangladesh. So now that we know that, let's go to the day before the event, April 25th, and see what was happening then. On April 25th, 1989, a 1,000 millibar area of low pressure propagated over Bihar and West Bengal, India, with a trough extending east across Bangladesh and into Manipur, India. The system remained largely stationary throughout the day into April 26th. On that day, another low approach from the west and in conjunction with the ridge over China, the pressure gradient became tighter across Bangladesh. Warm, moist air flowed northeast from the Bay of Bengal, while cool, dry air flowed south from the Himalayas. In the upper levels of the atmosphere, above the low, strong westerly winds from the jet stream created ample wind shear, a key factor in the development of supercell thunderstorms capable of producing tornadoes. The jet stream became particularly intense on April 26th with a sounding from Dhaka observing 240 kilometers per hour 
or 150 miles per hour, winds at a height of 10.6 kilometers or 35,000 feet. An established dry line over western Bangladesh served as a focal point for thunderstorm development. By 12 UTC, all the aforementioned factors served to produce severe thunderstorms across the country. Around 1230 UTC, or 1830 local time, a tornado touched down near Dwalatpur and traveled east, soon striking Saturia. It caused tremendous damage across a 150 square kilometer area, with Saturia being hardest hit. Its path was about 80 kilometers, or 50 miles long, and had a maximum estimated width of 1.5 kilometers, or just under one mile. A World Meteorological Organization newsletter noted that the tornado was estimated to be between 338 to 418 kilometers per hour, or 210 to 260 miles per hour, and that would rank it as an F4. Using the EF scale today, it would be ranked an EF5. It killed roughly 1,300 people and injured 12,000 more. Damage was extensive and countless trees were uprooted and every home within a six square kilometer area of the tornado's path was completely destroyed. The damage cost 1.5 million US dollars in 1989, which equates to roughly 3.25 million US dollars in 2022. An article in the Bangladesh Observer stated, the devastation was so complete that barring some skeletons of trees there were no signs of standing infrastructures. So what do you think about an EF5 rolling through such a densely populated area and it went for about 50 miles or 80 kilometers? That is incredible. Yeah, I mean, oftentimes we talk about tornadoes here in the United States where there's a hot spot for tornadoes. A lot of times we get back then F5s, now EF5s. But on that side of the world, there's not often that you get a tornado that strong. But when it does happen in those densely populated areas with maybe construction that's not as well up to code as other areas of the world, it turns into these devastating events making, you know, a tornado like this that top spot for deadliest tornado in the world. That's right. And just getting that image of anywhere within, I think it was six, six square kilometers uh, yeah. where, where the tornado had touched down, just total devastation. And even that remark from the Bangladesh observer, I mean, other than uh, some skeletons of trees, everything was gone. And that is yeah. just completely devastating to that whole area, to those families. It, it's just incredible, incredible. In the U.S., I know we've experienced you know, a lot of tornadoes that would have similar effects, mm -hmm. you know, totally devastating communities. So it's not just in the U.S. You, you can have this occur just about right. anywhere if the conditions are right. And to get those conditions right, you do have to have um, topography, you do yep. have to have ocean or, or water, bodies of water, the temperatures, jet streams, things need to come together to really get those strong storms to form. Yeah, and here we had the Bay of Bengal having that warm, moist air coming up, and you also had a dry line forming. So a typical scenario that you would see here in Tornado Alley during, you know, tornado season in the United States, pretty much the same setup happened out over there and gave a similar situation. You have a, an F5 or, or an F4 or an EF5 tornado touchdown. So very deadly and very costly tornado. If you guys are familiar with tornadoes outside of the United States like this one, definitely let us know down in the comments. Uh, we're most familiar with US tornadoes because we do live here in the United States. But like we just discussed, a lot of strong, deadly, damaging, violent tornadoes happen outside of the United States. So if you know a good one outside of the United States for us to take a look at, leave those in the comments below. And we appreciate you guys do providing those suggestions because we Absolutely. are interested. Sometimes we don't get a chance to hear a lot of other weather that's occurring uh, in other countries, but it's, it's always good to get that feedback from you guys and suggestions as well. So this was great. I really enjoyed looking into yeah. this uh, event and putting it together. It's not as lengthy as some True. of the more recent recent ones we've done, but you know, it's definitely worth doing. I, I'm really glad we did this one. So there you have it, the Dwalat Poor Saturia Bangladesh Tornado Case Study. We still have a long list of suggestions for US-based tornadoes as well. We promise we're getting to them, yes. along with ones like the Quad State Tornado. We're still waiting for 
reports to come out on that one. I haven't seen anything official. So we are not blowing off the Quad State no. Tornado <laughs> case study. I know every time you guys see a case study pop up, you're like, is it the Quad State Tornado? It's on the list. It's, it's on, on, the list. on the list. We want to make sure that we're saying the right facts right. and we have all of the things straight because I would hate to film the video, put it out, and then the next day they're like, oh, it was actually an EF1 and it only went through one state. And it's like, well, Gotta refilm yeah, that. <laughs> exactly. But we do have some exciting ones coming up too, yes. like the more Oklahoma tornadoes from yep. 1999 and 2013. El Reno. El Reno, yep. definitely. There's a, a lot of other ones that you guys have suggested, so we're chipping away at them. Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. It helps us out a ton. It's free, it doesn't take but a second of your time. And as always, follow us on our social media, Facebook and Instagram as well as our website and the school weather website which will be linked down below. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday.